everyone. I see some people are starting to trickle in. We're going to give it about a minute um, for all of our lovely guests to be able to come to our panel this evening. So welcome. We're really excited for you to be here. We have some phenomenal faculty and current students to talk to you about our psychology and neuroscience departments, about the departments themselves, as well as their experiences within them. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your evening today to come and learn from us as well. Okay. So my name is Nicola Haggerty. I am an admission counselor here at Susquehanna. Thank you all so much for coming. Over about approximately the next hour, you're going to hear about the psychology and neuroscience departments from two phenomenal faculty members within the departments, as well as some of our current students. So I am going to hand this off to Dr. Tammy Tobin to get us started. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Tammy Tobin. I'm the chair of the biology department at Susquehanna University. I am a native of Rochester, New York. I did my undergraduate work in animal science at Cornell University, my graduate work in genetics at Texas A&M, a postdoc in biochemistry at the National Institutes of Health before migrating to Susquehanna, where I've been for the past 26 years. As chair of the biology department, I am the co-chair of the neuroscience major. So I'll be talking to all of you about that major and answering questions about that. And without any further ado, I'll pass it over to Dr. Jim Briggs. Hello, I'm Jim Briggs. I'm an associate professor of psychology here at Susquehanna. Um, I'm a biopsychologist. I'm originally from uh, West Virginia and I did my undergrad work at a, a small liberal arts college, West Liberty State College, and then um, did my master's and PhD in uh, biopsychology at Kent State University in Ohio. Um, after that, I did a little time in uh, the Navy for a, a postdoc and, and worked at the um, Navy Experimental Diving Unit before I got into academia. And I uh, taught up in Iowa for a couple years and then made my way to Susquehanna. I've been here for nine years. It's my ninth year now. And um, my research area is learning and memory generally, but um, I, my focus is um, the experimental analysis of memory and interested in uh, retrograde amnesia. And I think okay. we're gonna throw it to students now. And Caitlin, are you first? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, hi everyone, my name is Caitlin McMullen. I am a senior psychology major. I also have a philosophy minor, which is less relevant, but um, still interesting. And I'm originally from Lancaster, PA. Um, I've actually been working with Dr. Briggs for, I, this is my fourth year now as a research assistant and I'm doing independent research with him now. So I've been doing a lot in the rat lab and um, my favorites are memory, obviously, because that's what I've been working on. And I'm currently in the process of applying to multiple graduate departments um, with for PhDs and masters in either behavioral neuroscience or um, animal behavior. Wonderful. Noah? Hi, I'm Noah. I'm a senior neuroscience major. I transferred here last year, so I'm still kind of new. Um, I'm from Westchester, New York. And I'm doing research with Dr. Briggs. <laughs> <laughs> and Ashley. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Hewn. I am a sophomore psychology major uh, with minors in women and gender studies and leadership. Um, and I am from Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. Great. Okay, Jim, I think it's you. Okay, yep, I'm gonna share my screen here and talk to you a little bit about the uh, Department of Psychology. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm the Department Head of Psychology. That's why I'm here. Did I, did I not mention that? <laughs> I'm also the, uh, the co-director of uh, neuroscience, so I can, I can maybe field some of those questions or help there as well. So I'm just going to go through uh, some quick slides and talk to you a little bit about the department. Um, we and there we go. Okay, sorry. Um, we have uh, nine faculty members in the psychology department. Uh, you hopefully you can see our pretty face. Well, our faces there. Um, we're in a variety of um, different areas or specialty areas. We have a couple biopsychologists or behavioral neuroscientists, a couple cognitive psychologists, a couple developmental, one elderly with focus, one childhood 
focus. We have two clinical psychologists, again, one focusing on adulthood, one more on adolescence, and then we have a social psychologist here. So I think it's a nice um, uh, variety of, of subdisciplines within uh, the field of psychology for a, a small liberal arts institution. Uh, the curriculum, uh, just to touch on some, some basics here, we do have a, ma a major in psych, we have a bachelor's of arts and a bachelor's of science. Uh, degree. We also have a minor in psychology. We our curriculum is broken down. We have some core courses that students take: uh, Intro to Psych, of course, and then Stats and Research Methods. We have um, clusters of courses that students are required to take. So there's a developmental cluster. Uh, there's an inter-intrapersonal cluster. This includes um, abnormal psychology, social psychology, personality, those types of courses. We also have a fundamental paradigms cluster with labs. These um, courses are the behavioral neuroscience, learning, cognitive, psych, sensation and perception. And then we require students to take a variety of uh, elective courses. And I just listed some here, uh, topics in psych, drug society and behavior, environmental psych. So there's a, there's a variety of, of electives that are offered. In the major, as, as you progress and become junior, senior level, uh, we do ask that uh, students take a comprehensive exam, sort of a general psychology test. Um, the students just have to take it. They don't have to pass it. Uh, it's, it's really not an assessment. Well, it is an assessment of the students, but it's really for the department to make sure that the students are, are um, leaving here with a well-rounded education in psychology and, and have some general knowledge on several different areas in psych. Uh, we also have one of the required courses is a capstone research experience. And this is a semester long course that you work with a, a team of uh, fellow classmates that's directed by a faculty member in psychology and you do a research project start to finish. So you come up with an idea, come up with a hypothesis, you design an experiment or a study, you run it, you collect the data, you analyze the results, and then you um, write a paper at the end. And that will sort of conclude the, um, the capstone experience once you're done with that uh, paper. We do have uh, uh, active members in the department. So a lot of us conduct research. The students are doing capstone experiences. So a lot of times our students present the results from capstone or their research experience at various conferences. We go to several undergraduate level conferences like NCUR, for example, the National um, uh, Undergraduate research, research Conference, we also go to um, several professional conferences where students can present their research at a, at a um, peer-reviewed professional um, psychological conference. A big one that we go to is the Eastern Psychological Association Conference. Uh, this, uh, we, we usually get a bus. Um, we, we pile a bunch of students in there. Sometimes we take up to like 25 students and, and they present their research to um, professionals in the field. We also hire research assistants to help us well, conduct our research. So sometimes these uh, projects lead to publications, which is um, uh, pretty good at the, uh, the undergrad level to, to get a publication. It's not all work though. We do, some, we do have some fun. We have a nice active uh, psychology club uh, that meets uh, one day a week and they do various things. Uh, here we have uh, making some slime and, and uh, working at the, I think this is the um, Relay for Life or Walk for Life or something like that. Uh, and then uh, the bottom right one, you might be able to see that on the wall, some Rorschach tests there, some ink blot tests. So they uh, make crafts and watch uh, psychological movies. And uh, they do talk about um, what you can do after uh, you get a degree in psychology and also talk about things um, related to graduate school and professional degrees when you would um, graduate from Susquehanna. We also have a, a Psychi National Honor Society. Uh, it's not as active as the psych club, but, but uh, that opportunity is there. And then finally, we are uh, often asked, well, what do your students do after Susquehanna? So I just pulled some some uh, recent graduates and uh, listed some areas of employment and then some uh, graduate programs. Uh, sorry, this is a really busy slide with a whole bunch of words, but um, uh, recently we've had people at different correctional institu institutions. Uh, there's a research assistant at the National Institute on Aging, various family uh, 
youth services um, types of jobs, uh, case management, um, direct care, those types of things. Uh, one student's working at Drexel as a student services, behavioral, su behavioral su support specialist. Um, and then we, we recently have a lot of students going on and get their master's in social work. So we don't have a, a, a social work track here or we don't have a social work uh, minor, but um, with, uh, with a degree in psychology, that does make you competitive or, or able to get a master's in, in social work. A uh, couple highlights here, Marywood, Pitt, UPenn, those are ones that a lot of our students are um, getting into. And then we have some that move on and get their master's and PhD in various fields. Um, so some are thrown up here, you see clinical psych. Uh, we do have one uh, co um, or, or dual major psych and neuro. She's now at the uh, Emory University doing a PhD in neuroscience. It's not all psych and neuro. We do have some doing student affairs, social psych, school psych, and then some do speech and language pathology. Uh, we'll hear from about neuroscience in a minute, but some of the um, uh, uh, dual majors or, or double majors, psych and neuro, they also go on to do some uh, occupational therapy type of um, uh, degrees and maybe um, uh, PA, so a physician's assistant, those types of um, programs. Yeah, so that's what I have for the psychology department. And now I think we're going to Dr. Tobin for neuro. Tobin, you are muted. My dog was running around the living room and I was, <laughs> I muted myself to keep the noise down to a, a, a slow pant. <laughs> um, so I'd like to talk to you today about majoring in neuroscience. Um, as Dr. Briggs said, the neuroscience major is an interdisciplinary major. And so both biology and psychology oversee this major. So we have over 10 faculty members who teach classes and mentor research students in neuroscience. And they represent a diverse array of research interests from learning and behavior to cell and molecular biology, developmental biology, neurobiology, and human cognition, amongst others. Our curriculum goals are to provide students with a broad background in biology and psychology, along with focused coursework in neuroscience. Throughout the major, we provide opportunities for an emphasis on career readiness skills. So those include teamwork, ethics, and communications. And there are extensive opportunities for research throughout the major that culminate in a full year senior research capstone experience. And together, these provide our majors for a wide variety of career goals, ranging from the health sciences. Well, actually, I'm just going to, when I introduce you to our alumni, you'll see some of those, those career possibilities. We do have a heavy emphasis on research, both within our laboratory courses and also as standalone opportunities. And the reason for this is that being a scientist doesn't mean you can just memorize a lot of science facts. To be a scientist or a clinician, you need to be able to actually do that work. And so it's important that students get to practice that and actually do it throughout their careers. Because of this, all of our labs are taught by faculty members. Um, I love graduate students, but they're more junior in their careers. And um, so we feel it's really important that those laboratories are taught by faculty members. We also have extensive opportunities for summer research internships, both on campus and off campus. And as I said previously, we have a full year research experience as our major's capstone. That capstone experience regularly results in students who are co-authors on publications with their faculty mentors, and they also always present at at least local meetings and also frequently at regional and national meetings, as Dr. Briggs has said. Recent destinations for our students include Washington, D.C., Memphis, Tennessee, Boston, Massachusetts, and our animal behaviorist recently took his students to Alaska, as we can see down here, where they got to wear funky uh, jackets, but also won the best student research presentation. 
So our students get to do some really amazing research while they're here with us. Instead of talking for a whole lot longer, what I want to do is introduce you to some of our recent alumni. And by doing this, I hope that you will see that an education at Susquehanna isn't just about the coursework, but it's also about the co-curricular activities, uh, the study abroad activities, and the internships that our students get to do. And by introducing your alumni, you get to see some of the breadth of the things that they do. Overall, about a third of our neuroscience graduates go on to programs in healthcare professions, and that ranges from nursing, physician's assistant, um, dentistry, optometry, medical school, vet school. Um, about a third go on to graduate school in a variety of master's and PhD programs, and about a third successfully seek employment. Together, 96% are successfully doing one of these things within six months of graduation. So we're really proud of our students. The first alum that I'd like to introduce you to is Kate Welch. While at Susquehanna, she was a member of the championship women's swimming and diving team. She did an Atlantis clinical fellowship in Portugal. And this picture of Kate is shortly after she actually helped to deliver a baby there. And she currently attends the Francis Marion University Physician's Assistant School. Jordan Ziza was on the men's football team. And when he completed his neuroscience degree, he pursued a Master's of Management and Organizational Leadership at the Penn State Smeal College of Business and is currently the Senior Strategy Development Analyst at Highmark Home and Community Services. Erin Reese while she was at Susquehanna as a neuroscience major, was one of the most decorated women's track and cross country athletes in SU history, with many indoor and outdoor records. She got research honors in neuroscience last spring during the COVID uh, chaos, working with a faculty member in the chemistry department and currently works for Hudson River Healthcare. Lauren Beck, was a member of the SU Dance Corps and the SU Strings. That's uh, because she plays a string instrument very well. She did a minor in religion and healthcare studies. Um, healthcare studies, by the way, is a popular major with a lot of our, or minor with a lot of our neuroscience majors because it provides a lot of the coursework required for physician's assistant schools, nursing programs, and the like. And she currently attends the uh, Goodness, the Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. And the last alum I want to feature is Caitlin Ondek. She is an example of the kinds of flexibility we have with our GO program. She did a Go Your Own Way internship with Oceans Research in Mosul Bay, South Africa, studying great white sharks. She was the editor of the SU yearbook, led the swing dancing program, and is currently finishing up a PhD DVM program, Doctor of Veterinary program at UC Davis. So I hope what you take home from this is that your opportunities as a neuroscience major at SU are really only limited by your own imagination. You get to travel to amazing places, make lifelong friends, and have fulfilling careers. And with that, what I'd like to do is just stop sharing my screen, which I did successfully, yay. And I'd like to just open up the floor to any questions that you have for us or for our students. And you can raise your hands, you can yell them out, you can um, write them in the chat box. While we wait for our students to put questions in the chat, a question that I've been doing a lot of at a lot of these departmental panels that has been really fun to hear the answers is it's a question for the students and a kind of a separate question for the faculty members, um, which is for our students, why did you come to Susquehanna and or why did you stay? And for the faculty members, why have you decided to stay and teach at Susquehanna University specifically? Anybody can start with that one. Why don't we start with, uh, is there a student who's ready? Caitlin, you got one? Yeah, sure. Um, so I came to Susquehanna a little unknowingly. Um, I was originally really planning on going to a big school 
And my mom pushed me and was like, no, you should go check out this little place. They look really nice. And as soon as I stepped on campus, I think anyone else, any other student can agree with me that it's the home feel. Um, I think I've heard it come out of everyone's mouth that like Susquehanna just feels like home. And when you know, you know. And um, I think I definitely stayed my freshman year because of my research experiences that I was fortunate enough to have. Um, and I'm lucky enough to keep doing that. Noah, well, you're a transfer. I am. I went to a different school closer to my house um, in New York for the first two years, and I was really not happy there. It was very much of a commuter feel, and I wanted to feel at a, I wanted to go to college somewhere home away from home. So I was like, you know what, Pennsylvania sounds great. Um, so Susquehanna was on my list when I was beginning my college process, and they were on my top. Their school was just closer, and at the time, that's what I needed. And when I decided to transfer, I was like, you know what, let me reach out again, see if it's a possibility to come. And I was welcomed with such open arms that it was so overwhelming. I came to visit the campus and I felt like it was where I belonged. And I talked to Dr. Reinhardt, who is one of the neuroscience professors, and she just told me how great the major was. And I was really excited for the first time in a really long time. And when the semester began, it, I got to take classes that I was really looking forward to um, and it was just a really great experience and it definitely feels like home and it hasn't gone away that feeling which is probably the best part of coming to SU. All right when I started my college search process I knew I wanted a small university. Um, I knew that I wanted a liberal arts school um, with a, a solid academic reputation um, and I knew that I wanted it to be uh, relatively close to home. Um, so I'm about two hours away from my home here at Susquehanna um, and when I came to visit Susquehanna I fell in love with the campus. I definitely agree with both what Caitlin and Noah said that when they came to visit it just felt right. Um, so I guess my little piece of advice uh, to the uh, prospective students is um, when you visit campuses, try and picture whether you can see yourself going to whatever uh, institution that you are visiting. Um, and then that's what really helped me um, know for sure where I wanted to be. Um, Hannah, I'm going to answer your question before I blather on, on, on what brought me here. Um, you say, what is the student to faculty ratio? I believe it's still about 14 to 1. Is that right, Nicola? actually 13 to 1 at this 13 point. to 1 faculty to student ratio so mm -hmm. to put it in more specific um, uh, a more specific light the courses that I teach uh, the biggest class that I teach has 24 students together in a lecture lab combination um, that's my advanced genetics class Noah's been in that one and um, and the smallest class that I teach is about well actually my research lab consists of five students. So we range from there. But the, the largest class in my major uh, has about 30 students in the lecture and is capped at 24 in the lab. And then the upper level classes are all capped at no more than 16 students. So um, they're nice small classes. I get to know everybody in my classes very quickly, um, which is good or bad for them, I'm not sure. But brings me to my answer to the question, and that is why I came to Susquehanna. I think when I introduced myself, you heard that I went to two very large institutions for my undergrad and my grad school. And then the National Institutes is even, of Health is even bigger for my postdoc. And when I finally realized that I wanted to teach for a living and I wanted to teach at the college level, I knew that I didn't want to teach at a big university. I, I could get a lot of money in grants and do some cool, I do cool research here too, so I haven't lost on that. But um, I wanted to get to know my students. I didn't want my grad students to have all the fun. And so being able to work with my students in the lab and in the classroom and get to know their names and their, yeah, sometimes more than I want to know, it just has been really fulfilling. And that is why I've stayed for 26 years. Yeah, so I'll, um, I'll go and I, I want to circle back around and our, our biggest class that we have in psych is 35. 
and that's our intro to, to psychology class. But that's the only big class that we have. So I, I, I think that might be one of the biggest ones on campus. I'm, uh, I think maybe the, the chemistry classes get- Chemist's uh, a little uh, bigger, uh, yeah. Yeah, but, but um, 35s is the biggest one for us. Uh, most of our classes are capped at 25. So the majority of our classes are around 20, but we do have some very small classes like uh, Dr. Tobin does over in, um, in bio and neuro. We have um, some that are uh, very small. So our, our advanced research design and analysis sometimes is five. We also have um, uh, independent research courses, which can be like a one-on-one. -on -one. So yeah, there, it ranges from about 35 down to one or two students, um, but the majority of them are around 20. So uh, then to, uh, to get at why I came here or why I have chosen to, to stay at Susquehanna, kind of selfish. Um, we, we really have nice facilities here. Uh, I, I, Caitlin mentioned that we, yeah. I work with rats, so we have a nice rat facility. Uh, so it's a place for me to do my research. Um, like Dr. Tobin, I didn't want to be at a big place. Uh, I went to a small uh, liberal arts institution and that's where I wanted to be. I, I don't know if I wanted to be teaching, but I knew I wanted to do this kind of research. Um, so I thought a small place would be, would be best. Um, once, I, once I got here, um, again, a little selfish, but all the students have to do research. So that requires me to, to continue doing research. Uh, we get a lot of uh, resources for a small institution to continue that research. Uh, research. So yeah, it's, it's just a nice place. Um, it's, it's very homey, like you heard from the students, very friendly, uh, faculty get along, um, and yeah, it's just a nice place. Oh, yeah, and our students are really awesome, and that makes it nice, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody, please feel free to keep putting questions in the chat. That was a great question, um, and I see another one from Bethany. Thank you for that, and I'm going to let the faculty members answer that about talking about double majoring and what that looks like at Susquehanna. Yeah, so a lot of our students double major. I, I, I don't know the percentages. I don't know, maybe, maybe that can be thrown out, but <laughs> I know in psychology, um, probably more than half um, are, are double majoring. Um, mm, maybe not, I'd, I'd have to look, but it, it's, it's a big percent. Uh, we, we do see some with neuroscience, psych and neuroscience double majors. Um, we also see uh, double majors with some languages. Mm -hmm. That's, that's big. Yeah. In, in our department, so when I'm looking at neuroscience, the most common double majors are biomedical sciences, and that's for the students who wanna to go to medical school. It gets them into the courses that they need for that. Psychology, and that's for the students that really wanna go into counseling or masters of social work. That gets some of those psychology courses. And then the other ones that are really popular, again, languages, those are easy double majors for a lot of students. And um, the, one of the coolest requirements is that you study abroad for a semester in a country that speaks that language. So you get that opportunity. Um, and then um, philosophy is actually quite popular mm -hmm. with a lot of students. Our philosophy professors are amazing and they, they're really great at teaching critical thought and ethical behavior. And that meshes very well with psychology and neurosciences. Um, and then we have um, a lot of students who are minor in music. Uh, because we're a big music program as well, and a lot of our students are quite talented. So, we see um, a number in creative writing as well. That's mm -hmm. that's a popular one for psychology. Um, business is another popular major to have with psych. Um, I think the psychology curriculum is is somewhat maybe more flexible, uh, just how the courses are laid out. Uh, and, and it, it is rather easy. About a third of the courses that you need to take here go towards the major, and then you have about a third that go towards the uh, central curriculum, the mm -hmm. gen ed requirements, and that leaves about a third of, of electives, and, and a lot of students either pick up a minor, sometimes two minors, um, sometimes too many and do three, but um, that other third can go easily towards uh, a second major. So see, Hannah is asking, does neuroscience deal a lot with physics and calculus? Hannah, not as a major, but it depends on the, on the um, career that you want to pursue. So neurosciences does not actually require either physics or calculus. Um, the math class that neuroscience majors take most often is um, 
psychology, the, the, the psychology statistics course, I forget the name of it, actually. Um, they also can take biostatistics and that counts. Um, if a neuroscience major needs to take calculus for a postgraduate program, we absolutely will make a, a substitution there for the math requirement. That those are easy things for us to do. Um, physics would be taken as additional courses. This is one of the reasons why students who are applying for medical school or vet school or dental programs will oftentimes double major in biomedical sciences or do a healthcare professions minor. Um, physics is required for those graduate and professional programs, but not for the major necessarily. Um, although some neuroscience programs would want some physics, you would work with your academic advisor to see if that would be necessary. Uh, next one. Jim, you can help me with this because you've advised a lot of neuroscience students as well. What are career opportunities in the neuroscience field outside of healthcare? Outside um, of healthcare. Hmm. So, first of all, we have students who are absolutely doing their graduate work in neurosciences. And so they're pursuing PhDs, um, masters in those areas. We have students who go, and this is this sounds like it's healthcare, but it's really not. We have students who do a master's of public health. And these are students who um, are working with healthcare professionals, but are also working with governments and not-for-profit organizations to try to make sure that healthcare is done very well. We have students, lots of students in neuroscience pursue genetic counseling and other counseling careers. Um, and then, of course, uh, the, the Penn State uh, Smeal School of Business is just dying to get more of our students. So if anybody's interested in a business career, starting with neuroscience, you're like a golden child for them. So um, there are lots of opportunities. Yeah, I was going to mention um, Jordan Zezza doing that, that, that yeah. program at the, the Smeal Business School. And I think that that's, seems to be popular right now. The, um, it, it, might be healthcare related working for the insurance company, but it's on the more business side. And they like yeah. to have individuals that have a sciencey mind and, and a way of thinking that, that can help them out. Um, we, we also see some, some going right into business. I, I know there are a couple students that, that left um, psych and neuro and, and working in the business field. Uh, one is, is some um, human resource sort of analyst at, at Deloitte um, and, and sort of um, working in kind of HR areas. So yeah, that's, that's one that I can think of that's outside of the healthcare. Field. Let's, let's throw it around to the students. What are you guys thinking of doing when you graduate? Uh, Caitlin. Um, so uh, my ideas right now are mostly focused on just getting my PhD in something with behavioral research. Um, I've really enjoyed what I've been doing with Dr. Briggs, so I'm gonna try and focus on doing that still. But my end goal is to be a researcher and um, probably a professor, because I really enjoy um, teaching and helping out students. And like, um, my, it's kind of corny a little bit, but I have like appreciated the um, type of work I've got to do as a student, and I would like to be able to give that opportunity back. And I think it's great that I could do my research in something I'm really interested in and also like help undergraduate students like learn either they love or maybe even hate research. So that's what I'm looking to do. <laughs> Ashley. I am still a sophomore, so um, I don't have everything figured out yet and that's totally fine. Um, but as of now, I'm thinking that I want to um, pursue a, a master's in clinical um, counseling and I would like to uh, potentially work with children. So I'd like to be a counselor working with um, kids. And Noah. I started off as wanting to be a PA, but after doing research with Dr. Briggs, I decided that I think I definitely want to go more research and PhD and master's. So my plan is to get a research job, apply to a couple fellowships, and see if that's where I want to go and kind of figure out my way through that. Um, but I definitely want to stay within neuroscience because I really do enjoy learning about it and being able to, especially with the rats. <laughs> Noah 
and Caitlin, can you talk a little bit more specifically about what you're doing with your research? Like, I know you work in rat lab, which is really cool, but what are you doing with the rats? And then um, anyone else as well can talk about the research you're working on too. Caitlin and I are actually in the same um, project. Right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. We haven't been able to um, start yet, but we're hoping um, to see how memory is affected when rats are learning how to get food and teaching themselves like to press a button and then they get food and seeing how that can be affected um, with stress. So we stress them and then we see, are they gonna remember that? Are they not? Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to see if amnesia has an effect as well. I think that that's hits most of the points, Caitlin. Uh, for the current project, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something that I think is really cool for myself is that some of the research I've done with Briggs has been published. Um, and so that's like, that's something that you can look forward to if you're coming in in a research idea is like being, it's one of the highlights of my life saying that like I'm published. Um, but we've done a lot of research with um, passive avoidance chambers and actually the same concept of like how stress impairs extinction and how like you can induce amnesia and um, other kinds of things while using a tone shock pairings. And I've also gotten to work with um, operant chambers and that same kind of principle about um, and we've looked at freezing and how like um, tone shock pairings are incorporated with that. And so um, it's actually really, it's really interesting. It's kind of hard to talk about if you're not very well known with like the terms and stuff because it can get kind of bogged down and confusing. But um, yeah, my favorite is the passive avoidance chamber. I think it's really interesting because you can get the data right away. Um, like we have a, a chart and we write down like, cross latency times and you can, I mean, it's not statistical data yet, but one, bef even before you're like analyze it, you can see like, wow, this rat took two minutes to cross when they should have only taken 30 seconds or vice versa. So um, I think I like that instant gratification of either knowing or not knowing if it worked. And it's really interesting to actually get to see the process of like, you have this idea of like what should be correct and then what actually is correct. So that's my favorite part. And like, that's one of the coolest things about research. Yeah, and I think what's really like nice about Susquehanna, especially with the neuroscience major, is how you get to kind of test every sort of lab. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in three different classes with Dr. Tobin and I did microbiology with her, so I got- Poor to girl. <laughs> I chose it <laughs> with my decision and I've enjoyed every single class. So I got to do microbiology with her in lab and that was drastically different than what we did in lab for genetics. Um, and that's drastically different than what I do with Dr. Briggs and other sciences have drastically different labs. And it's really nice to get your feet wet in all those different lab techniques. So then when you do have your caps and you're like, okay, where do I want to go? I, I really enjoyed being in the rat lab. So I kept going to Dr. Briggs. Hey, can I be in your lab? Can I be in your lab? Until he finally said yes. And it worked and I'm having a great time. <laughs> uh, but that's, pro that's like such like it's amazing to be in the neuroscience major because it's both psychology and biology. So you really get the mixture of both in the lab and also learning about it, which I think is a really good mixture. I think something just real quick to add about research. Um, like I've been working with the rats since I was a freshman, or excuse me, first year. And um, I, for my capstone, I actually worked with a different professor, Dr. Klotz, and I did a social experiment with um, humans and like how, um, it just kind of like it was a personality thing basically and I think that was really interesting because I never really wanted to work with people and I did that and like we have a poster for it and we went to EPA and like I enjoyed it but I really know that now I'm definitely dedicated to working with um, an animal model but I think it's really cool how you can um, be diverse in your research. Okay. Um, Dr. Tobin or Dr. Briggs, are you working on research currently at the moment? I am. Um, my research is not neuroscience research, but I'll talk about it anyways, because it'll give you all an, I an idea for the opportunities that exist at Susquehanna. So I am a microbiologist and I'm a, actually a microbial ecologist. And I am studying bacteria that live in hot soils above a 
burning coal, underground coal mine fire that's been burning since 1962. And that is even before I was born. And so the soils are very hot and they're chemically weird. And we're studying the bacteria that live there and how they work together to try to survive in that environment and how they may be helping to make that environment a little less toxic than it is. And so I welcome students into my lab from the very first year there at Susquehanna. I have, uh, like I said, five senior research students and currently two non-senior research students. Um, but I regularly have, have more than that as well. So, um, and we, we publish, regularly publish papers, go to the American Society for Microbiology International Conference, which is all over the US and in Canada as well. And so that's where we normally go to present our work. And it's fun. Want me to mention some of the work I'm doing? The, yeah. uh, uh, so Caitlin touched on and, and Noah touched on some, but um, I am right now interested in um, uh, extinction and that, uh, that goes or is related to uh, my sort of general area and that is um, fear motivated tasks because one thing that we know is if you are afraid of something or if someone has a disorder, um, anxiety disorder, fear, phobia, um, maybe post-traumatic stress disorder, those are all anxiety related. Uh, and it's really, really hard to get rid of those fearful memories or ideas. Um, we have certain techniques that can help, um, and that would be extinction. So you can get rid of those sort of fearful memories, um, but it doesn't persist. So we're interested in looking at fear and how we can eliminate that fear, maybe with amnesia, um, in, in attempts to figure out how we can keep those fearful memories away for an extended period of time. Um, so right now we're looking at how stress can affect that um, extinction process because we've, we've learned that if you are stressed in most people that have fears, phobias, PTSD, they have high levels of, of arousal, they're, they're more likely to be stressed or in very stressful situations, um, that can interfere with the, the learning or the unlearning of that fear response. So um, we're, we're looking at stress and how we can um, get rid of those uh, fearful memories and, and sort of the interaction between stress and that extinction process. Hope that makes sense, helps. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, I just thought of something real quick, a question for Ashley that I'd really like for you to answer is because you are so recently um, graduated from high school and are closest in age to some of the students that are watching, what advice would you give for students that are looking for the psychology and neuroscience programs and looking for that right fit for college? Yeah, um, I would definitely talk to professors, talk to students um, about their own experiences. I think that's the best way to um, really see whether that, that that's something that you can see yourself doing um, or, you know, eventually like how everyone's sharing their own research experiences, whether that's something that you might be interested in. Um, if you're not interested in research, that's also super cool too. <laughs> um, I'm not super heavy in the re research side. I'm much um, more interested in the um, uh, like counseling and clinical side, but that's super cool. There's plenty of opportunities to do practicums and things like that um, in the psych major as well. Um, but I would definitely just say, talk to people um, and do your own research of the schools and definitely visit campuses. I apologize for my dog, Sarah here. She apparently wants to be a part of the conversation too. <laughs> she frequently joins us at school, so come visit us. <laughs> Is there any additional advice, um, Noah or Caitlin, or um, from Jim or Tammy, that they would like to add for our students that are picking schools or kind of in that process? I think the biggest thing for me was talking to the professors. I remember like one of my first days of the semester, I went and doc talked to Dr. Tobin and was like, hey, like I really wanna be in your class and I really wanna be able to do this. And I have at, in my arsenal five professors that I know I can just go to and be like, hi, I'm having a crisis or hey, I wanna be in this class or hey, I don't know what I'm doing with my life right now. What do I do? Which I did about a month ago. <laughs> and- <Really>? um, <laughs> What? Was it in a week? 
it's been a month, but like I've slowly been trickling. <laughs> I didn't want to hit everybody at once. <laughs> But everybody is really supportive and they're just there for you. And I think that that's the biggest thing at Susquehanna. The reason why it feels like it's home is because the professors treat you as, your, as their own. They know that you're there to have an experience and they know that you're there to learn and to just be able to get the best part of college and they help you do that. And I think that if I visited when I was a freshman and talked to the professors, I would have come here as a freshman and done all four years here. And I regret not visiting when I was a freshman, but I really glad I transferred. But definitely talk to the professors. They're the nicest human beings. And also there's a lot of dogs on campus. So that's, okay, Sarah comes to class a lot. <laughs> and we also have Bear with Dr. Reinhardt. So that's a huge plus. <laughs> We love Bear. Uh, yeah, so definitely talk to the professors. Definitely look at what classes they teach. Look, hey, I want to take this class. Let me ask around. Let me see if they can get me connected with students who've taken that class or students who are in similar situations that I've been or are kind of questioning what they're doing. And I think that that just is the best feeling, being able to go to a professor and be like, hi, I don't know what I'm doing. Help. And they're like, okay, I got you. I was going to say almost the exact same thing. Uh, having us coming from like my personal psychology background, um, even like not that long ago, I realized I really only took classes with two professors, um, and that's probably my own fault. But <laughs> I've also really enjoyed all the classes I've taken, so no no regrets. But um, I think working with your professors and even like looking on the website, on SU's website, and emailing anyone that you think would help you. They're so nice. They're, they'll respond, respond to you as soon as they can. Um, if you know, it's just like silly questions, like what classes do you teach? What would be beneficial for like what I want to do in my future? So I think taking advantage of that opportunity to email them, even if it's just a quick, because then your name's out there. And then if you do choose to come to SU, you're, you can walk and be like, hi, do you remember we interacted over the summer? Like, um, I just want to thank you for helping me out or and follow up with other questions and like building that connection early can be really useful for yourself. Yeah, please do, by the way, um, and this is from our, our us department chairs, <laughs> please do email us with any questions that you have. We will be delighted to, to talk with you about Susquehanna, um, about preparing for college in general, even if you don't come to Susquehanna, which we hope you will. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, but yeah, we're, we're really happy to do that. Uh, helping our students be as prepared as possible to be as happy as possible here is important to us. Oh, that's for you, Jim. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so you, you do not need a major in neuroscience to be a psychiatrist. Um, actually, to be a psychiatrist, you have to go to medical school. So you have to get a medical degree. So you could have a neuroscience major, but you would also need um, that biomedical sciences minor at least. Um, it, would, it would probably be a good idea to also look at the, um, the biomedical sciences degree uh, and, and go that route and then maybe work in some neuroscience courses. But, but yeah, you would, it, to be a, a psychiatrist, it would be a more medical, medical degree. So, so yeah, um, bio, biomedical sciences, neuroscience would work, but you, that biomedical, um, or I'm sorry, the, the healthcare the, studies minor. minor. Yeah. What's that? How that healthcare studies minor, I healthcare think. Healthcare studies minor. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's what it's called. Thanks. <laughs> sure. No problem. <laughs> I actually have that minor and it is very helpful. Um, you'd be working with Dr. Riker Brown, who is the head of that minor and your minor advisor and she will get you into the classes you need for medical school. She advises you through it. She tells you where it's good to apply, what your chances are, what you could do to make your chances better at applying, and she really just helps you through that. I'm not looking to go into medical school as far as I know, but I still have that minor, and it's really been a great time having her be there for me. Um, she even knows about different fellowships I could apply to and different PhD programs or masters or different job opportunities for me. So if you do want to do medical school, definitely tag on the healthcare studies minor. 
if it's if it's all right, I, I should um, back up maybe and and there that that is a question that we often get. What's the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychiatrist and a psychologist? Um, so a psychiatrist uh, is a medical doctor that gets a medical degree and then does a fellowship in uh, psychology or in neuroscience and studies um, maybe the brain and, and behavior. Uh, a psychologist is one that goes gets a PhD in psychology, whether that be uh, experimental psychology like myself or uh, clinical psychology. And then if you get a degree in clinical psychology, then you can become a clinical psychologist and then you can do the different therapies, the cognitive behavioral therapy, the psychoanalysis and those types of things. So they're, they're really two distinct degrees, medical degree for psychiatrists and then a PhD for psychologists. Do you attend med school right after graduating? Um, ooh, yeah, that's, uh, I, you do, you can. Um, I think right now, uh, some people are taking some time or maybe, um, maybe uh, the programs are, are um, looking at individuals that might have a little bit of experience in the healthcare field before getting into med school. So I, I think we see some of that. Dr. Tobin might be able to, I'm, that a little better. I'm reading. I want to be cut. This is the anesthesiologist question we're responding. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Um, There's one before that. Yeah, the one before. Do you attend med school right after? Oh, grad oh, 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 so sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, do you attend med school right after graduating? Many of our students do. It depends on what they want to do. And so the average age of acceptance into medical school right now is actually 27 years, which sounds freaking old when you're in high school, I know, but don't panic. Um, so our students um, generally take two routes to medical school, actually maybe three. Um, the first is if they start out wanting to go to medical school and they do really well in classes and they know they want to go to medical school after all their internships, they apply and they go immediately following graduation at Susquehanna. Because of the way medical schools do things, that means you need to have all of your prerequisite courses done by the fall of your junior year. And that includes two semesters of chemistry, two semesters of organic chemistry, two semesters of physics, biochemistry, and all of your biology. It's a lot of work to get in there. Um, some of our students, for a variety of reasons, they're doing double majors, they want to study abroad for a semester or a full year someplace, um, choose not to put themselves on that quick a track. And so what they do is they complete their Susquehanna degree and then they work for a year or two while they study for their medical admissions exam, the MCATs. They take the MCATs perhaps the year after they graduate and then go to medical school the year after that. And so it's, it's probably equally common right now for our students to either choose to go to medical school right away or to take what we call a gap year, um, again, for a variety of reasons, um, mostly having to do with the amount of really amazing things they want to do while they're an undergraduate, um, but sometimes just because they want to take a breath and, and figure out if that's really for them uh, before they apply it and go for it. Um, we also have for students who struggle a little in the introductory classes, there are post-baccalaureate programs that you can go to for a couple of years. They help you learn how to do the MCATs, they get a couple of your struggling grades up and help you get into medical school after that. So those are the most, most um, common routes. So uh, you don't have to go to medical school right after graduating. Um, you can. It just really depends on which route you want to take. Um, and the next one is an anesthesiologist because she loves chemistry. I think, and, and, and you're out of my comfort zone here, so I would like you to email me because I want to make sure I can answer this question accurately. I need to go back to my healthcare professions colleagues. But I believe an anesthesiologist degree is a two-year degree after a bachelor's. But I'm not 100%. I think you can also do it through medical school. I need to check on that. Um, uh, let's see. I also took an interest in neurology during my years of science research. 
on a path. I think that for being an anesthesiologist, and, and I think this is going to be the same for any of the healthcare professions that we that you would want to go into after a bachelor's degree, is that you should major in what you love, and then you should take the prerequisite courses that you need for that program. And I'm assuming an anesthesiologist is going to require a typical smattering of biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, maybe some physics, uh, maybe some biochemistry, maybe some psychology courses. I'm not exactly certain what those programs want, but um, the neuroscience major, the psychology major, biology, biomedical sciences, biochemistry, and chemistry could all provide you with a background for that. Um, and you would need to work with your academic advisor and also with Dr. Riker Brown, the healthcare professions advisor, to figure out what the specific requirements for that career path would be. We could mention when, when you become a major at Susquehanna, whether that be um, neuroscience or uh, psychology, whatever the major is, you get an advisor in that, in that area. Yeah. So they're knowledgeable and, and, and they will be able to help you along and look at those yeah. um, requirements and programs. And the other thing that, that's, that I think is good for you to know is that all of those majors, psychology, neuroscience, biology, chemistry, and biochemistry, start in such similar places that you can start in one of those majors and change your mind anytime in like the first year and a half and be just fine um, when you really figure out which one it is that's going to be the best route for you. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for all of these great questions in the chat. I know that I have learned a lot about the departments as well. Um, if any of you have any additional questions for our current students, as well as our faculty members, please feel free to email me and I can get you all of their contact information, um, as well as Dr. Briggs and Dr. Toman's information is on the website, so you can find them right there. Um, we also have, I know a few of you were on the biology and biomedical sciences panel yesterday. Um, but if you were unable to and you have more questions specifically about healthcare studies or anything like that, there will be another one of those panels next month. So please feel free to tune into that. Um, thank you all for taking the time out of your day to view the panel, as well as all of our phenomenal panelists that have taken the time out of their day to chat with you. I know that I have really enjoyed this and I know that our prospective students really enjoyed the opportunity to hear from you directly, because I'm sure as you can tell, they're all very passionate uh, about the programs here at Susquehanna. So again, thank you so much. We're looking forward to receiving your applications and hopefully hearing from you. And I hope you all have a really great night. And we'll see some of you on campus soon. Yep. Nice Please to come visit. Our, we are open for visits. Here. Yep, come visit. Yes.